Hey, what's going on? It's Nathan Resnick. Welcome back to another episode of Product Sourcing Stories brought to you by Sourceify. Today we have Steven from Easy Ship. We were just jamming about his crazy adventure down in Zion where he rode uh, his bike in like 110 degree heat uh, all across Utah, which is crazy because that's where I'm based right now. Uh, Steven, you're a wild man and it sounds like you are a shipping expert. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Nathan. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, yeah, it's my pleasure. So, you know, before we jump in, I really want to understand how you got into the e-commerce shipping world. I mean, you know, obviously you're at Easy Ship, which is the go-to, you know, platform to help, you know, merchants and crowdfunding campaigns handle their shipments. But like, how did you get into the industry? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, for me, I I saw that e-commerce was the future. I think brick and mortar is going away and uh, that human element is, is brands are figuring out better, better and more creative ways to build such a human story and a human experience through e-commerce. Uh, so I knew I wanted to be in that sector. Now, why shipping? Um, I, I think primarily because that's the worst part of shopping online. It's that, sh it's that shipping aspect, right? Like, when, how am I going to get my product? How am I going to pay for this? Um, it's typically like the, the one, the one thing that might even uh, hurt conversion this in mm -hmm. terms of if, if shipping's too expensive. Uh, so I saw what easy ship was doing in terms of optimizing shipping, um, figuring out uh, different ways to make global shipping seamless, just like domestic shipping. So that's really how I, I got into it because I, it. I saw what Easy Ship was doing and I knew exactly that this was right. exactly what e-commerce needed. And so like for those that don't know Easy Ship, what what is like the main problem that Easy Ship solves? Yeah, so we we basically uh answer that one question in terms of um how how do we ship this from point A to point B? Uh and B being anywhere in the world. Right. And from an easy ship standpoint, we believe every brand, no matter how big or small, should be shipping internationally. The world's getting smaller and there's mm -hmm. no question about it. Right. That makes sense. So I guess I'm curious for those listeners that don't ship internationally yet or don't have customers that are shipping internationally. What 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 are they, what's the difference between, you know, let's say shipping a product domestically and shipping from, let's say, someone's, you know, warehouse or apartment in you know, New York to Germany, I mean, what goes into handling international logistics for an e-commerce merchant? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I, I, I do want to, uh, you know, talk about one point that you mentioned. There are always customers internationally that want a brand stuff. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, there's no question about it. Um, and I think before Easy Ship, um, from an international side, it gets incredibly complicated because there's custom paperwork, there's commercial invoices. Um, if you're shipping something with like a battery, for example, there's special documentation that you need on that or special solutions that you need. Um, and the list goes on, to be honest with you. There's actually a lot of different variables that come into play because when you're shipping internationally, you're, you're going to have to take that package, put it on an airplane and ship it out. Right. And because of that, there's a lot of regulations behind that. What um, a company like technology, like easy ship, what makes it so much more seamless is that um, we do that automatically. So depending on which country you're shipping it to, we automatically will pre-fill the custom paper, the commercial invoices. We'll even uh, display specific solutions for you to ship that um, optimize uh, to that location, depending on the package size, uh, as well as what type of stuff that you're sending, whether it has a battery or a liquid. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. And, and, you know, someone might ask, well, why don't I just, you know, ship through DHL or something like that? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, so the, like what, what I, I guess the main benefit around easy ship is it makes that whole process and customs uh, clearing it's a lot smoother and, and easier to manage yeah so so from a technology aspect that yes exactly mm -hmm. so we streamline the, the the documentation part of the the headaches of shipping internationally but i think the other thing that we do is that 
I think that's a really great point. Why don't we just ship it out with DHL or why don't we just ship it out with FedEx, right? And what we've seen is that FedEx DHL might be the best solution to ship to Canada, but it might not be the best solution to ship to Australia or mm. Hong Kong or Europe, right? And what EasyShip does and uh, companies like EasyShip, um, what, we've, wh what we're doing is that we are putting together real solutions. So for EasyShip, we've partnered with about, um, you know, 50 different couriers and we offer over 250 different shipping solutions to a customer or to a, to a merchant. And all of a sudden you're able to optimize your shipping right. and you don't need to play this game in terms of, okay, I can either ship it with DHL that's going to cost me an arm and a leg or I'm going to ship it with this other solution mm. that has no tracking and it's going to take six months to get to the right. customer. Right. That's interesting. So one of the questions that comes up a lot within our community is, you know, just, just shipping pricing in general. I feel like it's a very, it's an industry that has, has very little transparency. You know, if you and I go to a shipping company, they might get you a rate that's 30% less than me. Does easy ship help with that in terms of, uh, you know, rate transparency? Is that, is that kind of part of the process? That's right. That's exactly it. So with EasyShip, what we do is number one, we have about little over a hundred thousand clients kind of in our book of business. We are operating out of seven different countries. So with that, it kind of allows us to have a lot of buying power and a lot of kind of pull and, and push with our partners. So we offer very, very competitive rates to our to merchants of all sizes and they get benefits from that from a shipping cost perspective. Got it. That, that makes uh, a lot of sense. I, I want to yeah. kind of touch on just your personal opinion on rate transparency because it's a topic that is, you know, really controversial in regards to some people seeing that, you know, couriers are kind of, you know, ripping off some small businesses with rates that are higher than, you know, volume shippers. I mean, what do you think about just rate transparency in general? Uh, rate transparency in the sense that uh, they're going to charge some clients more than, than others, basically. Right, exactly. I, th I think it's, it's um, from my opinion, uh, couriers do that because there's a lot of, um, you know, there's ignorance around how much a, uh, what that actual shipping cost is, right? Now, the reason why is because especially in the U.S. market, and we're, when we're looking at international shipping. DHL, FedEx, UPS, they're usually the ones that kind of control the thought patterns in any kind of merchant's heads in the U.S., right? Uh, so when we think about international, we're, we're gravitating towards one of those, those big companies or a USPS solution. Uh, which usually at times can be kind of uh, a lower quality solution because it's a postal solution. Um, however, there's over, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different couriers that are going in and out of America to other different, um, other different countries, right? So for example, one of our biggest partners is SF Express. Um, so they have a direct link um, to the APAC region, to Southeast Asia and Hong Kong and, and China, as well as you know, other places around Asia. Um, and it's much cheaper and it's a, bet, it's a great solution to ship your products out of. But again, people don't know that. So they, they just, they've never heard of SF Express because they don't live in, um, they don't live in Hong Kong. They mm -hmm. don't live in these places. So they wouldn't know. But uh, if you go around Hong Kong and you ask, like, where's your, who's SF Express? Everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, we use them all the time. Right. So um, with kind of pricing transparency or uh, shipping rates transparency, um, it really comes to knowledge, right? And what EasyShip does um, is provide a lot of solutions um, for every kind of specific place around the world. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. I, I want to touch on fulfillment and shipping for, for crowdfunding campaigns. Um, you know, I know we're both going to be at the crowdfunded summit by launch boom, really excited for that. What, 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 what do you think is the best approach for someone that's launching on, you know, let's say Kickstarter to, to handle shipping and fulfillment. I mean, 
what what route do you see being the best in, in today's world? Yeah, I, I think there's no cookie cutter approach uh, towards things. It really depends on your product. That being said, uh, I think for people who are watching this, um, you have to understand that uh, shipping is about complexity, right? And every every kind of variable adds complexity to it. So the bigger the product is, it's more complex, right? So all of a sudden prices will go up. Um, if you add a battery in there, all of a sudden it's more complex to a courier because it, it limits the amount of options or the specific planes that they can use to ship it out. So all of a sudden that comes into play. Um, and there's many different factors. I think what I'm trying to say here is that for a campaign, you have to realize that you should really look at shipping costs almost immediately. And every time you make a change to that product, which is very common in the crowdfunding world, you should always revisit those shipping rates because any sort of change can, can basically spike up the price at, at times exponentially. So mm -hmm. for example, if you add a battery, which is very common, like, um, you know, you have a product and all of a sudden you're like, Hey, look, this is going to be awesome. If we just put a lithium ion battery in it. Well, that really does all of a sudden limits the amount of shipping solutions that a client can use because not every shipping solution can ship a lithium ion battery. Um, and these are certain things that, you know, from my experience working with a lot of different crowdfunding campaigns, the ones that have done their research are in a really great place to provide a really great experience mm -hmm. to their backers. And those that did not uh, do the research, they're in a place where they're making some really tough decisions in the sense that should we sacrifice customer experience for shipping costs or should we basically get in the red by paying a little bit more for better shipping solutions because all of a sudden we did not know that adding a battery um, has created such a such a, a difference in shipping costs. Right, got it. That, that makes a lot of sense. So, so wrapping up here, two last questions. One's sure. more tied to current times. It, with everything going on with you know COVID nineteen, you know shipping mm -hmm. couriers seem to be like you know flooded with with shipments, and the e commerce industry is booming. Sure. What I mean, what do you think is like? just the future of these shipping couriers are rates going to continue to increase? Like, I mean, what are you guys seeing at easy ship? Yeah, actually, um, I would say that at the height of COVID when everything was just kind of going haywire and two months ago was where we experienced the worst kind of price spike that we've ever seen before. It was in insane how expensive it was. And the reason why was because there was a decreased amount of planes up in the sky. Uh, certain couriers just completely turned off. Um, and because of that, prices just spiked naturally because of that. Uh, I think things are stabilizing. Um, you're gonna see an, a little bit of a pipe, uh, price spike again because we're approaching peak season uh, with Q4 coming along. Um, but what I what I think what we're seeing is stabilization. Of course, uh, that is kind of all else equal because we don't know if there's going to be another kind of COVID surge hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, not COVID surge hard, a COVID surge, mm. um, you know, within the United States or anywhere else um, right. that will have negative impacts towards price. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. Last question here, more of a, a fun one, but you know, you yeah. work with so many brands at easy ship. W what's your favorite? Is anyone, you, you know, you can shout out or one that oh, uh, you love that people should check out. Oh man. There's so many, there's so many, man. Like I, I feel, I mean, I think this is the, the part of the job that I absolutely love, especially working with crowdfunding campaigns. Like you talk about really passionate entrepreneurs, like putting, putting things together and, and making a product that they're really proud of. And all of a sudden you have a community that's behind you and they're like, Oh my God, this is exactly what we've been like thinking about. Um, and it's so rewarding just talking to these entrepreneurs and seeing them kind of put, put this stuff together. And then from there having a flourishing e-commerce business, uh, I'm prolonging the question, but like, uh, basically, <laughs> if I can, if I can just shout out a couple of different brands, I would shout out like Link. It's a great brand, I, I, cool. great team, great 
Great Everything Mate Bike, uh, which is a fantastic e-bike and it's done nice. so well building such a cool brand and of course nomad lane um i think what they've they've done is, is is nothing short of extraordinary and of course our one of our our favorite if i can just name one more tropics field out there in barcelona they oh. they've done such a great job building such a an awesome shoe company out of That's awesome you know a few campaigns and they're they're wow. really yeah i see them all over new york city that's amazing um, so from australia it's, it's awesome. too there you go that's epic yeah. that's amazing well steven thanks so much for joining us on product sourcing stories if people want to get in touch with you or check out easy ship where can they find you yeah just go to easyship.com contact us awesome well there you have it thanks again for joining us